The Rubik's Cube has six colors on its six sides. It's useful to know what those colors are and where they're located on the cube when you're solving the cube. Also, when you're practicing the cube, you could practice solving the cube when you don't have one in your hands. For instance, waiting in the line at the grocery store or post office or sitting at a stoplight. You can practice the methods that I'm going to be teaching you for how to solve the cube because they can all be done in your head. I'm holding the cube in what I call the USA flag position with the red, white, and blue facing towards me. A lot of other countries have those same three colors in their flags with white pointed towards the sky as in clouds, moon, and stars. The red will always be on the right and the blue will always be on the left. Now that's not the right and left as I'm looking at the cube, but it's as though I were standing on the stage at the U.S. Senate or the House of Representatives. If I turn to the right, I'm going to see the red Republican conservatives seated on the right side. Four of those four words have the letter R in them, and that helps us remember that red is on the right. If I turn to the left, I'm going to see the blue liberal Democrats seated on the left side. And that helps us remember that blue is left. Three of those four words have the letter L in them. The word Democrats does not have the letter L. Well, that's a place where this analogy doesn't fit quite perfectly. Well, I want to point out I'm going to be using lots of stories, analogies, and memory tricks for teaching how to solve the cube. I want to encourage you to use those stories, analogies, and memory tricks to the extent that they're helpful or useful. When they don't quite fit perfectly, let go of that piece. Just don't worry about it. Also, if you think of variations to these stories, memory tricks, and analogies, or come up with your own, please do that. It's far more effective to use your own stories, analogies, and memory tricks. That takes care of the three primary colors of the cube. Now let's talk about the reciprocal colors. The word reciprocal means opposite of. So if I'm looking at white here, you might think the opposite color of white is black. I don't mean opposite on a color wheel. I mean opposite side of the cube. So the opposite side of the cube is yellow. That is the color of the sun. So the sun is a sky color. The clouds, moon, and stars are sky colors. And the white and yellow are close to each other on a color wheel. That should be enough to memorize that yellow is on the opposite side of white. Blue is an earth color as in the blue of the ocean. The reciprocal color on the opposite side of the cube is green as in green fields of grass or green trees. So the blue and green are earth colors. The red can be found in the flames of a fire. The opposite side of the cube has orange, which can also be found in the flames of a fire. So I'm calling those the fire colors. Now to take this analogy one step further, you can say that wind occurs in the sky. So the sky colors of white and yellow, if we call that wind instead of sky, now we have earth, wind, and fire. And some of you recognize that as a 1980s band. If you have a smart speaker such as a Google Home or an Amazon Echo, you could say, hey Google, play earth, wind, and fire music. Or Alexa, play earth, wind, and fire music. And that will remind you of some of the songs that they were famous for. Now you should have all the colors of the cube memorized. Here's a pop quiz. What color is opposite of white? What color is opposite of green? What color is opposite of red? Did you get those all right? If not, maybe you should go back and watch this section again. The cube has three kinds of pieces. There are center pieces, edge pieces, and corner pieces. The center pieces have only one color and they cannot be moved in relationship to each other. And you might think, well, wait a minute, what if I move this center section this way? Doesn't that move the center pieces? Well, not in relationship to each other. If I turn back to the flag position with the red, white, and blue facing me, the red still has the opposite of orange, the blue has the opposite side of green, and the white has the opposite side of yellow. 
so they cannot be moved in relationship to each other. The center pieces determine the color of each surface of the cube. The edge pieces have two colors on them. There are four edge pieces on each layer of the cube. The top layer has four edge pieces. The middle layer has four edge pieces. The bottom layer has four edge pieces. So four times three, that's a total of 12 edge pieces on the cube. Then there's corner pieces. The corner pieces have three colors on them. There's four corner pieces on the top layer and four corner pieces on the bottom layer. There are no corner pieces on the middle layer. You might say, wait a minute, if I move the middle layer like this, that looks like a corner piece. Well, yes, it's the corner of that layer, but it's not a corner piece because it doesn't have three colors on it, and it's not on a corner of the cube. That's on the corner of a layer, but it's not a corner of the cube. And if we turn the surface back to where it belongs, we can see that that piece that we were trying to call a corner piece is actually an edge piece for this surface and it's an edge piece for this surface. Edge pieces can be moved to any edge position on the cube and corner pieces can be moved to any corner position on the cube. We solve the cube in layers. We first solve the top layer, then the middle layer, then the bottom layer. I can also sometimes refer to these as layer one, layer two, and layer three. When we solve layer one and layer three, we do the edge pieces first, then we do the corner pieces. When we solve layer two, we're only solving for edge pieces because that's all it has. It has center pieces, of course, but they can't be moved in relationship to each other. When we solve for the edge pieces in layer one, we move each edge piece to its correct position with the correct orientation in one sequence of moves for each edge piece. Similarly, when we solve for the corner pieces on layer one, we move those corner pieces to the correct position with the correct orientation in one sequence of moves. When we work on layer two, we move the edge pieces into the correct position with the correct orientation in one sequence of moves for each piece. It's different when we're working on layer three. We solve for the edge pieces first, then the corner pieces, but when we do the edge pieces, we first put all of the edge pieces into the correct positions with one or two sequences of moves, and then we fix the orientation of the edge pieces on layer three with one sequence of moves, which fixes all of the edge pieces. Then for the corner pieces, we move them into the correct positions with one or two sequences of moves and we don't care about the orientation. Once all of those pieces are in the correct positions, then we fix the orientation of the corner pieces with one sequence of moves to fix all of the corner pieces. At that point, we have completely solved the cube. Now that we have all that introductory information out of the way, it's time to scramble the cube. I'm going to use a particular scramble that I know will give me the opportunity to demonstrate all the variety of moves that you might need to make when solving the cube. You don't need to scramble your cube the same way. You should be able to follow along with the methods that I'm teaching and be able to solve your cube because I will be teaching all of the variety of situations that you might come across. If you want to scramble your cube the same way that I'm doing, I'm doing it with the colors of the flag, red, white, and blue is the order of the colors as we describe them on a flag. So I'm gonna turn the red one quarter turn, then the white one quarter turn, then the blue one quarter turn, then I'm going to roll the cube over and do the reciprocal colors. So the reciprocal of red is orange. So quarter turn for the orange. And the reciprocal of white is yellow. So quarter turn for yellow. And the reciprocal of blue is green. So I'll turn the green one quarter turn. Then I'm going to turn the green one more quarter turn. 
And that scramble gives me the opportunity to demonstrate all the variety of moves that you might need to make. I'm going to turn the cube back to the red, white, and blue position with white on the top and the red and blue facing me. And now we're ready to solve for layer one. 